Today I want to share with you how I made this drawing and I'll share with you some tips and tricks along the way that will hopefully help you with your drawings. Hi, I'm Faith. I'm an artist and arts administrator and I create short daily videos and long weekly videos all related to art, inspiration, and tips. My process typically starts with choosing a reference photo and my favorite place to find reference photos is the museum app by Sketchy. This app is totally free and what it is is it's an artist to artist network. So artists can share different snapshots and pictures that they have taken and make them available through this app to other artists who use in their artwork. And then the artists share their finished pieces and connect it with the reference photo. And I'm not being sponsored, I'm just a fan <laughs> of the app. And um it tends to lean portrait heavy, but there are other subject matters on there as well. Lots of hands, places, animals, all sorts of different things. Something that's really nice about this app is you don't have to be concerned about overstepping uh, a photographer's IP because the entire point of this app is that you're sharing photos for people to make artwork based on. So that is what everyone knows and understands when they enter this app. There's no confusion. You're sharing your photos to be used in artwork. So that's how it's gonna be used. Let's take a tour of the app. So if you open the Sketchy app, um, the art page, if you go like on the bottom left there, you can see the little house, the little home page. That's artwork that's new, that's created by people who you follow. The next navigation is the palette, and that is new artwork that has been uploaded in chronological order. And if you click on a piece and you swipe to the right, you can see the reference photo that the piece is based off of. And then of course you can click on the name, the username of the person who did the reference photo, and go to their accounts. You can save those reference photos if you want to use them, peruse their other reference photos. And you can do the same with the artist. You can go ahead and swipe back to the left where the artwork is. You'll see the username of the artist. You can choose to like, like and comment on their artwork. You can choose to follow them, that kind of thing. Find them elsewhere on the web. Here's an artist. I'm going through their images. Um, I'm going through the inspiration that they've shared because you can both save artwork and save inspiration for other people. This person had a lot of different faces, so I went ahead and I think I'll go ahead and save this piece, this photo. I could possibly use that in the future. I'm gonna see if there's someone new whose work I haven't seen or someone I don't follow. Um, I like this person's work. There you can see the reference photo and how heavily they transformed it. I'm gonna go ahead and follow them so that I can keep updated on any new pieces that they post. Then if you click the light bulb on the bottom navigation, it takes you to all the new inspiration that's come in. So this is all reference photos that you can pull from. And then you go ahead and you can save them with that little flag icon. And I'll do this all the time, like if I'm like hanging out outside or if I'm like killing time waiting for something, I'll pop in a museum and save some, some of those inspiration pictures um, to work from at a future date. Here's my profile. So you can see when I click on the little flag there, here are all the inspiration photos, the reference photos that other users have uploaded that I've saved that I'm interested in working on in the future. So we're gonna pull this one to use for our photo today, for our art piece. Um, I'm gonna save it to camera roll. You just click those little three dots on the right and you can save it to your camera roll. And I really like her expression. I like how her brow is furrowed, but she's and she's squinting a little bit. It looks like there's like some big feelings happening here for such a little person. <laughs> so I think it's really interesting. The lighting is great. There's good color. I think this will be a really fun piece for us to work from. So I rarely, I if ever, work directly from the reference photo. I always edit them and I'm just using the photo app that's on my phone. So I first crop it. I like to work with them in a square. And then I usually mess around with the color, the saturation, the vibrancy, the warmth, all that kind of stuff until I get it into a way that sort of speaks to me and creates uh, an inspiration for me for how I want the finished piece to look. So I think we're getting close here. I'm gonna play around with the exposure a little bit so I can get the lighters, the light sections a little bit lighter. 
And now what I do is I go into Procreate and I bring in, um, I hit the wrench, I add in an image, and then I use the little air under the arrow, there's the uniform button, and I can make the picture take up the full canvas. Um, I use the uniform because I don't want it to get warped at all, so I use the uniform so it all stays the same. And then I'm gonna create a grid. I went back to the little wrench tool and on there it said drawing guides. I clicked that and I brought me here and I'm gonna do a grid. I'm gonna play around with the grid size to make it four squares across. And this is important to me because I find that when the grid is too small, I get too uptight and then you lose my mark making in the finished piece. So I like to keep the grid really big. And now I'm gonna go ahead, I took a screenshot of it, so now I have an image of the photo with the grid in my photos. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename my layers. I like to work with three layers usually, sometimes I'll add more or less, um, or I'll use a few more, but usually it's just an underpainting layer, a line layer, and a crosshatch layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna get started in the line layer. I'm just using the 6B pencil. And I'm using a color from my palette that is pretty close to black. It's not exactly a black, but it's pretty close to it. And then for my underpainting layer, which I just did, I used the freehand tool and color dropped into different spaces on the portrait and then blended them together with the soft pastel brush. And then I get started crosshatching the portrait. So I like to crosshatch. It's my favorite way to work. I like how the colors, um, contrast with the underpainting layers so I try to create a vibrancy and a life to the portrait that's why I like my colors to be so bright and why I like the sketchy effect of the cross hatching because to me people are always moving and they're lively and they're energetic and faces are rarely ever perfectly still so I want there to be life and movement to my portraits so for me that's that's what that communicates to me is the bright colors lots of life and energy and then you know all that cross hatching you know, done in a very ununiform way. I'm doing kind of a broken cross hatching by having them come in all sorts of different directions um, instead of just following the form of the face. To me, that brings a lot of energy to the piece. And that's what I'm striving for is making it energetic. Now I think for some people who enjoy working from their imagination, they might enjoy the museum app because you can study lots of different faces. So something that I find less interesting is when I see a portrait artist who works from their imagination and all the faces look the same. <laughs> and I think it's, you know, it's nice when you can take the time to build up your vocabulary, your visual vocabulary and your memory vocabulary of lots of different faces and facial features so you can mix and match them together to create really unique faces from imagination. And I think the museum app can be really helpful with that. Um, I obviously prefer to work from the photos themselves, but if you like to work from your imagination, I think that's a great thing to do. Um, something you can do to speed along the process of uh, studying the different faces is to trace them um, because then you're really forced to like move your pencil across all those details um, but you don't have to go through the trouble of trying to render perfectly um, since that's not what your goal is is not working from the reference photos you just want to study the faces so I think that's a shortcut you could do that would be really helpful as you can tell from the types of faces that I save into my museum app I like to draw from a lot of variety of faces. The museum community is global, and so there's pictures from all over the globe, more people than I would ever be able to meet. And I'm really drawn to people of all ages, genders, expressions, emotions. I try to get a variety in there um, because it's more fun to meet new people, and that's sort of how I see it, is I'm getting to know them and I'm getting to meet them. And to me, the more genuine the photo, the better. Like, I'm not drawn to the ones that are superposed 
or really edited. Those aren't the ones that I'm interested in. I'm more interested in the ones that are really like authentic and genuine. There's a great Chuck Close quote about portraits where he says, a face is a roadmap of someone's life. Without any need to amplify that or draw attention to it, there's a great deal that's communicated about who this person is and what their experiences have been. And, you know, I think that's really true. I think we have a really unique reaction to faces and portraiture. And I know that I definitely feel more connected to the sitter after I draw them. You know, spending that time really focused in trying to render and study all those little details on their face. It is a roadmap and I feel like there's so much I can learn from them. Something that I really enjoy is really zooming in and studying those little details on their face. It really is like a roadmap to me of their feelings and their life and their experiences. And I feel like by drawing people, I get to know them better and I get to know myself better because I find um, a relatability to the emotions and the feelings that are being portrayed in the portrait. So I sort of feel like I get to know them and I get to know myself better in the process, which is really interesting. And yeah, like he said, it's a roadmap. So I feel like for me, I'm happy just zooming in really tight on the face. I feel like everything is said there for me um, and what I want to do with my portraits. So I don't feel the need for lots of accessories or little items or little things in the painting. I really love to just zoom in and just really study those faces because I think they're just fascinating. And I think that's why I like drawing from reference photos is because I want to draw from real people. I want to learn from their emotions. You know, if I just made them from my head, I would only be exploring my own feelings and emotions, but I want to explore their feelings and their emotions and find a commonality between us, you know? So I think that's why I really love drawing the, the portraits from reference photos because I want to draw real people and I want to get to meet new people and, and understand and share their experiences and, and build that empathy towards others and what their lives might be like. So here we are finishing up the cross hatching with all the different colors using just the 6B pencil for all the cross hatching. And there's the finished piece. I can see in my Procreate, you can go in there and see under um, canvas information and statistics, I can see that this piece was 8,070 strokes to draw and it took me two hours and one minute to make. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you.